Welcome everyone to Best Interest. This is Shane back for another Stock Pick of the Day video. It is June 26th, quickly wrapping up another month here. We are going to take a look at one uh, out of the industrial sector southwest. This is a airline. Uh, this was a recommendation from Tanya Myers. Can you review LUV? Well, that's what we're going to take a look at today. And before we get into the video, if you would take a moment to hit the thumbs up button if you find any value in the content. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever we put out any new content. I do do the Stock Pick of the Day videos Monday through Thursday whenever the market is open. So if you have a recommendation for a company like this one, go ahead and put it in the comment section down below. And we'll work it in the rotation on the day it pulls back. Now this is the best interest stock screener. This is how I look at a company on a high level to see if I am interested in investing. This is just an initial screener out of the thousands of stocks out there. This gives me an idea if I want to do any more of a deep dive into the, the company at all. If it meets the screener, five of eight for uh, companies outside of banks and insurance companies. For banks and insurance companies, I throw in price to book. You can use price to book for any company. Just make sure if you're using it outside of banks, or insurance companies don't just arbitrarily use one. Make sure you're comparing the price to book of that company to companies in the same sector and in the same industry. Now, again, just because it meets five of eight or six of nine for banks and insurance companies does not mean I am investing. It just means it goes into my watch list. I do more of a deep dive into the company, look at the financials, look at the balance sheet, the income statement, debt to equity ratio, assets over liabilities. Is the revenue growing? I look at the margins. Are they growing? Is their debt uh, being paid down? There's other things that I look at outside of this initial screener. This is just an initial screener. Now, you can use this screener. Go ahead and modify it how you want. You know, maybe there's some in here that you don't like that you'd like to switch out for something else. And this really is for dividend growth stocks. So it would not apply to all stocks. You know, stuff like the uh, dividend payout ratio of 75% or less would not apply. Growing dividend would not apply. You know, the others you could use for anything, ROIC and ROE for anything, uh, earnings per share growth, that sort of thing. But maybe you want to look at revenue growth. Maybe you like some other metrics here that you'd want to change out. Maybe you're not a dividend growth investor. But this screener is really geared around dividend growth stocks. Now, if you want to know more about this company, check them out at www.southwest.com. That's www.southwest.com. That is their homepage where I pull this information from. And that's where you should start. How does the business make its money? How do they, you know, what's their revenue look like? That sort of thing. You want to understand what the, revenue, what the company does to uh, earn its cash flow. Now, we are talking about Southwest Airlines Company operates one of the world's most admired and awarded airlines, offering its one-of-a-kind value in hospitality at 121 airports across 11 countries. Southwest took flight in 1971 to democratize the sky through friendly, reliable, and low-cost air travel. Now it carries more air, flyers, or more air travelers flying nonstop within the United States than any other airline. And that's really what they are. They're an airline, right? You can fly them all over the United States as well as some other countries. I know that they have some international, I believe they have some international uh, flights as well. Based in Dallas and famous for a employee first corporate culture, Southwest maintains an unprecedented record of no involuntary furloughs, furloughs layoffs in its history by empowering its more than 74,000. I mean, that's actually pretty impressive. 74,000 people to deliver unparalleled hospitality to Maverick Airline cherishes a passionate loyalty among more than 137 million customers carried in 2023. I guess it doesn't say where all they fly to. You'd have to go check them out on their homepage. Uh, some here high notes from their investors page here. Cash and short-term investments, 10.5 billion. Fleet, 819. Uh, I'm assuming that means planes. Load factor, 78.3. I mean, I assume that means how uh, full those planes are and looks like a net loss per share diluted. This would have been Q1 results for 2024. Again, go check them out at www.southwest.com if you want to know more about this airline or if you want to book a flight travel. Now, the reason we're taking a look at them, we are talking about Southwest Airlines Company, ticker LUV, out of the industrial sector, down 0.21%, not down significantly, but again, this one was recommend, recommended, so this was the first day uh, I didn't have anything else on the docket, and it was pulled back, so we thought we'd take a look here. Looks like they're relatively flat in the after hours, at least uh, as of the time of me pulling this information up. 52-week range as low as $21.91, as high as $39.53. At $28.45, it's kind of floating in between that high and that low. It is not within 15% of a 52-week low right now. 
Market cap of 17.026 billion, a beta of 1.14, so they are more volatile than the overall market. Price to earnings ratio, this seems extremely high for this company, 44.45, uh, seems really high to me. Earnings per share, EPS sitting at 64 cents per share. Earnings date coming up July 25th. For dividend yield, 72 cents. I believe they are a quarterly payer. We'll see that here in a little bit. Decent starting dividend yield of 2.53%. X dividend date June 18th, so we're past that. Looks like they're going to pay in July 10th, so you would not be in line for that July 10th payout. You'd have to wait a few months before you got the next dividend if you were to buy them now. And according to Yahoo, uh, Yahoo Finance, where I pulled this information from, $27.56 target price over the next calendar year. So it looks like they need to come down some. Looks like they're over uh, Yahoo Finance estimated price for the next calendar year. And we're going to take a look at dividend yield theory to see if this one is potentially undervalued. To do that, we look at their five-year dividend yield average, 1.03%. We compare it to the current, 2.53%, or over here where it says forward, same number, 2.53%. Since it is higher, that speaks to undervaluation. The numbers are inversely correlated. So uh, this one potentially undervaluated, un undervalue uh, currently, according to dividend yield theory. Payout ratio, oh, that's not good, 112.5%, so that's elevated. So they're having to do something. They're not getting the uh, the full amount from uh, free cash flows. So they may be taking on debt. There's, I don't like to see elevated payout ratios. I like 75% or less. So uh, at 112, this one scares me a little bit that it may be in jeopardy of a dividend cut. Now we're going to look at free cash flow here, see if we have growing free cash flow over the last several years. 2021, you can see here 1.8 billion. 2022, negative 156 million. 2023, negative 300, uh, 389 million. The trailing 12 months, negative 739 billion. So no growing free cash flow. Doesn't look like they're repurchasing shares here either. I really don't like the numbers so far. Uh, let's jump over to stockanalysis.com. Now, I always recommend more than one source so that you can make sure the information you are giving is accurate and up to date. They have 17 analysts that have taken a look at this. They call it a consensus hold. I would tend to agree. Uh, the numbers don't look great, at least through the initial screener so far. Uh, I don't like their price to earnings is really, really high. Uh, over 100% payout ratio is not good in my book. Uh, they do have a low estimate of $20, which would be a 29.7% decrease from where it currently sits. Average estimate of $30.52, which would be a 7.28% increase from where it currently sits. And a high estimate of $42, which would be a 47.63% increase. All the while, you collect that 2.5% dividend yield well, as long as they don't cut it. Like I said, with a payout ratio above 100%, that's, that's not a good sign. We're going to jump into statistics here and look at return on equity and return on invested capital to see how well this business is investing its funds back into itself. I like 10% or better here. Return on equity sitting at 3.7%. That's really low. Return on invested capital, 0.43%, really low. These uh, types of businesses are very capital intensive. They're constantly having to maintain their fleet of airplanes and renew airplanes. So uh, that's probably why you're seeing low return on equity and return on invested capital or buy new planes whenever they're uh, no longer serviceable. Uh, now, EPS growth, I like 10% or better, or I'm sorry, 5% or better forecasts over the next five years. 34.16, extremely high. That's an extremely high estimated uh, earnings per share growth. If they do that, that's really good. Uh, uh, revenue forecasted growth is pretty nice too, 6.29%. So good numbers there. Now, this one, ah, I was wrong. It's a semi-annual payer, not a quarterly payer. So it looks like they pay out a couple times a year, January, March, January, March, July, September. So sometime in there, January, March, or July, September, right in that time frame. Like they say 118.03%. So they have them even higher uh, at stockanalysis.com than Yahoo Finance did. Not good. Now, they say negative dividend growth. I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing flat dividend growth. I don't see that they've made a cut unless it was back before 2019, but I believe they actually raised it. Uh, in 2018 from 16 cents to 18 cents when I looked at this. So I don't agree with that dividend growth. They're not growing the dividend, but it is not negative. One year of growth, uh, I don't agree with that either, unless they've recently announced a, a dividend increase here. They're still at 18 cents. Buyback yield to 0.51. They must have been buying back some shares uh, some years back. And shareholder yield to 2.04%. And you can see here again, although going all the way back to 2019, they haven't raised that dividend past 18 cents, unless they've uh, called the recent raise that I missed. Uh, so some concerns on this one. Let's wrap it up, see how we did on the screener. 
Understand the business, that's where we started, check there. Did not have growing free cash flow, did not have a growing dividend. Payout ratio was well above 75, over 100%, which I do not like. Check valuation based on dividend yield theory. Dividend yield theory says it's potentially undervalued, not within 15% of a 52 week low. Return on invested capital and return on equity was not 10% or better, no check there. And earnings per share growth was smoking high, over 30%, so that one was good. Check there, so three out of eight would not make it on my watch list. I'll be honest with you, I don't invest in in airlines for this very reason the numbers never look good to me and the capital intensive nature of the business just scares me a little bit uh and then the other things there's a lot of exposure to them for potential litigation with the amount of people that are on and off planes and only would take a one screw up on a plane uh you know and some people to die for these industries to really get hit financially so i don't invest in airlines that's just me you take it with a grain of salt and let me know what you think of this southwest airlines down in the comment section as always, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up, ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community. I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions, opinions, or suggestions for future topics. So again, if you have one like uh, Southwest you'd like me to cover in the Stock Pick of the Day series, go ahead and drop it in the comment section down below. And this is Shane signing off, wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes with those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm only sharing my opinion and investing your journey for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk. You can't lose money. You should never invest any amount you're not comfortable losing. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and select criteria or seek the advice counsel certified financial advisor.